Today, we interview Nick Beatty, Michigan tennis player and former Minnesota state champion. In the interview, we talk about Beatty's future tennis plans, his success in the North Dakota summer circuit, and some of the huge matches with number four ranked Michigan. Let's get into it. We'd like to welcome Nick Beatty, Big Ten Athlete of the Week. How does it feel, uh, Nick, winning this award? That's that's pretty sick. I think you won it last year too, didn't you? It's always cool, like getting some recognition. I mean, even if it's like um, just college tennis. I mean, it's still like fun, like having your like picture out there and some like and for sure. Uh, it's fun hearing from like like hearing from you guys is unreal. Like that's a huge perk of it. Is like I hear from a bunch of people like that are. That, like reach out and say something and I like start like talking with them and like that's been something super fun from today. Our sponsor for today's exclusive interview is Quartz Plus Fitness. They put on an annual tournament called the Red River Open which is in Fargo, North Dakota. The prize money in this tournament has grown from a $5,000 tournament in 2019 to a 15k tournament in 2021. Nick Beatty won this tournament against Jackson Allen in 2019 securing the bag. Let's get back to the interview. This is, yeah, I feel like a big shot, which is kind of not super warranted, but that's pretty, that's, that's cool. Hey, I appreciate it. Hey man, that. you're making Minnesota proud and I deserve <laughs> the recognition and, um, and at, in a little bit here, we'll get into the, the Baylor clinch and all that stuff. So cool. awesome. Yeah. Man. I mean, you kind of are a big deal though, cause you've won the, you won a Minnesota state tournament, you know, got some big awards at, at Michigan. You're, you always play like those that North Dakota summer circuit or at least a couple tournaments. You went out to yeah. Bismarck, you beat you beat Gavin Young, who's insane. Like you beat him in the, the championship match in the in the breaker and he's now your teammate. That's super sick. Where did I did I play Gav or did I play somebody else? You played Gav in the Bismarck final. We final. we all had Oh, a, that's right. Yes. Dude, okay. we yeah, had yeah, yeah. A, I, oh my god yeah that was an insane match yeah we were all dude all all of us guys were watching that match you hit a you hit like the most ridiculous like slice backhand <laughs> pass winner i've maybe ever seen in my life <laughs> on match point yeah on match point <laughs> oh man yeah. I, I mean love... those those tournaments are so fun those those tournaments are awesome because like the um a bunch of people from like just a bunch of like tennis like enthusiasts and like locals come out like and are super into it it's that that's like the best part it's like yeah go like bismarck and like a whole bunch of like of like the people that love tennis in the area like come and watch and like that yeah, like I final think. was like so that that final had like more people than some of like the college like than only a lot of college matches do like that was so fun like that environment was awesome what well, yeah and it's great for all of us guys you know who are getting bounced you know in the second and third round you know <laughs> <laughs> every time no you guys are you know, still we, sick yeah i mean wait, we're trying you're trying our best you know but uh you know it's great for us guys who lose in those earlier rounds to you know to know these guys who are playing in the finals and know we're going to see some sick matches you know later on in the tournament even though we ourselves are out so uh we we look forward to those like just as much as anybody else are you, are you trying to play any of those summer tournaments again or do you think you're going to play after you because you'll graduate right? yeah I know I have a lot of decisions to make with that because like I don't know if I'm gonna try to keep playing or like try to play some futures and try to like keep the tennis going or if I'm gonna like be mostly done but like even if I'm mostly done with tennis like I think I would for sure still like play some of the Dakota stuff because it's just so fun like I know like I have so many friends I'll go play like I'm tight with like like Wyatt and like all those guys, like all these like players that he coaches and stuff. And <clears throat> those guys are, are total clowns are total like really hilarious. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think it would be fun to like go and do that and try and make some money and play some matches. Like that would always be super fun, like to do for the, however many years in the future. So I think I'll for sure do those. But as far as like my tennis and stuff, I don't know. I, I want to see how the rest of the season goes and like how, I feel about it and I still love playing and I love practicing. So, I mean, I, I would like to try to keep going with it if I could. I mean, I don't know if my, I don't know how my level will match up and whether it'll be worth it, especially like financially over time, but like, I still love playing. I mean, it's like pretty much, I mean, it's like what I've put so much effort and energy into the past, probably 10, you know, last, last like 
15 years. Let's get into, Isaac, if you don't mind, I want to get into the Ohio State uh, win and the Baylor clinch. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. sure. All right. First of all, how does it feel to uh, to beat Ohio State? And how does it feel to beat them at home? How is that any different? Like, how, do you get a little, I'm assuming you get an added boost from that. Yeah, it was, uh, it's just, it's huge because there is, well, there's a lot of layers to it because like, first of all, there's like the Michigan Ohio state thing, which is huge. Like the big rivalry, like in football going back to God, I don't know, like the fifties or even early. I don't even know, like going back earlier to Bo Schembechler and, Woody Hayes, I think that was the Ohio, the big Ohio State coach, and yeah. so I mean that's just such a huge thing, like culturally here, like in Michigan and Ohio, and even like nationally, like every like people know like Michigan Ohio State, so like there's that part of it, and like I love that stuff, and like I love like the sports like culture and history, so like there's that weight to it, but then there's also like Ohio State tennis has been dominant for the past twenty years, for the past twenty five years, like since the late nineties ever since their kind of head coach took over because they were not a great program for a long time before that. And then, I mean, they've dominated. They're, they're like a top five team every year since like the early 2000s and have totally dominated the Big Ten. So there's that aspect of it too. And I remember when I showed up to Michigan in 2016, I mean, it was like, oh, like we have Ohio State. Like that's that was just such a huge, like a daunting thing. And it still is, but like, the thing that like I credit like our coach here is like instilling like a really good culture and kind of like philosophy to our team. And, and also a big part of it is like the, the belief that we have like as a team now is just so much different since I first showed up and in the years like prior to me showing up, I think that's probably the biggest thing that's like changed a lot. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's huge and there's always this added weight to playing ohio state like as a michigan tennis player because we hadn't beat them after before last year we hadn't beat them since i think 2001 wow so it was like wow that's, we that's hadn't huge. beat them in forever and they i mean barely anybody in the big 10 had beat them in that amount of time i think maybe illinois did it once or twice i think um i think illinois did it once or twice that was just about it so yeah that's nuts going Same into the win. match i'm like super super like so tight like so nervous like every year that we go into it um and that's always how it is so yeah i mean it's so then when you finally win and you're actually like a part of it too like you're actually a part of like getting the dubs point you're part of putting like the first point on the board like such a huge relief and like such a huge like it's just such a good feeling i know you're you're what a sixth year now right or a fifth year yeah you're yeah. sixth year yeah because you got the red shirt and then you got the covid year that's right. Yeah. You still, you still get those pre-match jitters on those big Oh matches. yeah. Big time. I mean, cause like, even though I've been here for six years, I've really been only like playing in the lineup for three or four. Yeah. So it's still like, I'm at the end of like, what is like, can like a typical like college tennis yeah. career, like in my like fourth year or whatever of really playing. Cause I was kind of a bench guy for the first three. Was, were you a bench guy because you just, you know, weren't good enough because like you just needed to develop or was it just because like you guys just were an insane team? We were all, we just always were pretty loaded. Like it was just tough. Like we, and it was both because I always kind of had, like I've, I'm just pretty competitive. So I was super, super hungry to play. So I was willing to do a lot of stuff to try to get into that position, but it just took time, like from where I was at and just how loaded the team was. And we were, they were a pretty old team when I, like I redshirted because like the team when I first came was old, like was an older group and were very good. And there was just no, there was no chance I was going to play. So I was like, Hey, like let's develop for a year. And then you'll have four more years of eligibility after that to try to get in here. And then the next year came and like that team was stacked too, like very good, very deep and like an older crowd as well. At that point, the next year came and there was like kind of a chance that I could maybe squeeze in, I squeeze in for a couple matches, didn't really, but I wasn't like consistently the guy, like the guy playing six was a senior who was doing well. So it was like a um, good friend of mine too. So it was like, you know, that's just the way it goes. And then the next year I finally got a shot and that was the COVID year. Yeah. So it was like, um it was like oh shit man like the yeah that's tough like that's global brutal. pandemic when I, like everything was going super well like we had just gotten to the semifinals of indoors like we were three in the country like i was playing really well and like 
having so much fun. And then like that got shut down. So it's like, oh man. So then the next year was we could only play big 10 teams because of COVID. So like our ranking plummeted, like we just didn't get as much of a shot. And so then finally, like this year is finally like a normal year where I'm actually like in the lineup. So I'm, you know, like it was super, super long and drawn out career, but like, I'm super glad I did it now considering what's happened now that I have a normal year and we like took advantage of it especially like this past week let's talk about the big one let's talk about the Baylor the Baylor match so this week you guys had a big match against Baylor at home um first of all how does it feel winning that match and uh getting the clinch for your team um that's always a a great feeling for a tennis player um for those of you that don't know what a clinch is, it's the point that wins you the team match. Um, so in tennis, that's the fourth point in Division One. So getting that being the fourth match to win, it's a very special feeling. I've only ever had that once, and it was the best day of my life as a tennis player. So <laughs> yeah. I uh, I can imagine. Just tell us, how, how does that feel, getting that win for your team? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was – it was uh, well, so – just with, like for some context, like we, we had played Baylor like the past four years, always lost, always got killed. Um, and I mean, we'd get like the dubs point and stuff, but then the singles was always like, I mean, it was close, but like we'd go down like four one. So that was always kind of a hurdle for our team. So then, I mean, this year we had a ton of momentum going into it. I mean, we beat TCU who was one in the country. We beat Ohio state who was two in the country. Um, we were coming off like, just feeling really good. Everybody was healthy and feeling good. And we were, we were at home. And so, I mean, as it was like unfolding, it was like, oh, this is, I mean, we just always felt so confident, but um, it's, it's, uh, it's unreal. I mean, Matt, you know, the feeling like, cause when you're a part of like a tent, like a tennis family, like being on the team like that, and then winning with those guys and have everybody like come and rush to your court and start celebrating, like they're like, that's as good as it gets as far as like the tennis world is concerned is like, I think like being a part of a team is like, there's the individual stuff, like winning titles on your own, but like doing as a team is so fun. Cause it's like all your buddies. It's like all of your best friends that you live with and hang out with every day. And then like to win together like that, where everybody's contributing and like everybody like rushes to your court and vice versa. Like that's, yeah, it's just in, it's insanely fun. It, yeah, I'm going to miss it really bad. How do you know in a match like that where you know it's gonna be tight, where you know you're playing a team like Baylor that's you know kind of had your number over the years? Like, how big was that doubles point win for you guys? Well, like I don't know how it was for for you guys, but ours is six game. Yeah, so same. ours is just, it's just the one set. So it's just the I mean, it's just like a fever dream. It's just like yeah, it's just so quick and like every little thing means so much and there's like a lot of pressure on it because like a one i mean even though it's just one point it's still huge it's like a huge momentum thing so i always like um i was talking to my girlfriend about this but like i never like really remember a lot of these like matches just because it's so intense like so high intensity and like so much pressure and i'm just super tight too and <laughs> so i don't remember it too well but like it's it's huge and I, I mean like we the guy we were playing Boyton, I mean, he was just pl- like in dubs. He was just like playing Davis cup for Romania. He was just playing Bautista Agu like a month ago. Yeah. So then, and then like his partner is, uh, he's a sick player too. I mean, so it was like, um, that part's super fun to go up against those guys and feeling confident and good. And then taking that point, like in just this insane, like fine, like the five, four game that we broke was like the, like there was one hindrance call <laughs> um, I hit probably one of the bigger forehand returns of my life at the 30, 40 point. And then my partner took the deuce point and it was just like this scrappy point And he like flicked a like continental grip forehand <laughs> angle winner. Did you to, to, did, with the match? Did you do the, like the, the extended yell where you like, you know, you hit it and you're like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, I <laughs> wish, I wish I had that kind of foresight. I think it was kind of a pray. I think I kind of prayed. Yeah. I think God <laughs> took the wheel. <laughs> um, awesome. but no it was uh it was great well and and in the in the in the actual doubles point too we were down big on at one dubs two dubs with gav 
they were down five three i think five three forty love maybe wow Wow. so or maybe it was five three or five four forty love and they the guy had a double fault and then they played a couple just scrappy points and they were able to get back to the deuce point we got it and then massive like we're able to win on this high break and which i mean having that momentum going to singles even though i think even if we had lost the dubs point we were all feeling so good in singles and confident that we could that we still could have done it that was really kind of i think kind of the nail in the coffin for the match for them because we all got i mean i think we had five first sets again yeah um, that's huge after that, which is huge we we appreciate having uh nick Beatty on uh tennis with ike nick best of luck in all your future endeavors if you go pro we'll be We'll be cheering you on and hoping you hoping you get all the dubs and you know if, if we ever become a massive channel we'll 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 try to sponsor you. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, you guys are the best, man. This was fun. I uh, I wish you guys the best too with all this too. We'll keep in touch.